Microsoft Word 2.10 and Tables. Table Styles. Here we've got a table within the Microsoft Word 2.10 document. And if you look at the ribbon here, you've got the normal uh, tabs here. If I click within the table, look what happens. We get some extra items up here. So if I click on where it says layout, you've got various uh, layout designs. If I click the layout options, if I click within design, I've got various items, including these styles here. And look what happens. If I move up to the first style here, which is just a straightforward empty grid, if I move along to the next one, you can see what happens. You get a preview of what these styles will look like. So I'll just move along these one by one. I'm not clicking on anything. I'm just moving the mouse over these items here. And as you see, you get a preview of exactly what it's going to look like if you apply one of these styles. Now notice in this table styles group here, there's a down arrow here. And as you can see, there's way more styles. So you can choose one of these. So for instance, let's say you like that style here. Click on that and the style's been applied. If you don't like that, you can click on the down arrow here and apply a different style. Maybe you'd like this one here and it's applied. Don't like that? Try something else. Maybe this one here. So as you can see, it's very, very easy to apply styles to tables in Word 2.10. Merging cells within a table. Here we have a typical table within a Microsoft Word 2.10 document. If I click within the table, notice that the table tools um, um, tabs are displayed here. Let's say I want to merge these first two cells. So I just simply drag across those cells they're selected. If you want to merge those, I can click on where it says Layout, and then click on where it says Merge Cells, and there they are, they're selected. If I repeat that for the second two cells here, I'll drag across to Select, make sure the Layout uh, tab is selected, and then click on Merge Cells. And there they are, they're merged. Let's repeat that again, but this time we'll use a slightly different method for merging the cells. We'll uh, select the two cells here, we'll right-click, and then we'll go to Merge Cells. So as you've seen, there's two different ways of doing it. The way we did do it originally was select the cells, go to the Layout tab, go to Merge Cells. In many ways, the easiest way to do it is to select the cells you want wish to merge, right-click, go to Merge Cells, and there we go. So that's how you merge cells within Word uh, 210 tables. Splitting cells within a table. If I click within this cell here containing the word January, when I click within this cell, you'll notice the table tools are displayed. If I click on where it says Layout here, I can click on where it says Split Cells. This brings up this dialog box here, and from here I can control the split, so I can control the number of columns and the number of rows. I'll click on OK, and there you are, what was what, uh, a single cell has been split into two cells. If I repeat this for the uh, the cell containing the word February. I click on the Layout tab if it's not already selected. I click on Split Cells. Decide how I want it to split, so I'll have um, two columns, one row. Click on OK, and there we go. If we do it one more time, I'll click in the last cell here containing the word March, but this time we'll do it a slightly different way. If I right click, then go to where it says Split Cells, again it displays the Split Cells dialog box, and again, you can control the number of columns or rows. I'll click on OK, and there we go. Modifying the cell alignment within a Word 2.10 table. Here we have a table, and uh, if we want to um, change the alignment of the entire table, if we just drag across all the items in the table so that all the cells are selected. Within the Layout tab here, we've got various options that we can change. So you've got the Alignment uh, section here. So as you can see at the moment, we're using the default, which is a line top left. So as you can see, if you look carefully at the cells, all the contents are aligned to the top and to the left. If I choose this option here, they're aligned top center. There we go. The next option is aligned top right, like so. The next option down here is align center left, which looks like that. Next option. Align center, so that basically they're um, aligned vertically and horizontally. The next option here 
is a line center right, like so. So they're aligned to the right, but um, from a vertical perspective, um, they're aligned in the center. More options here, we've got align bottom left, align bottom center, and align bottom right. Or if you want to change it again to something else, we can go to align center. Notice instantly you have got various other options. So for instance, you also change the text alignment. If you click here and then click again and again, see what happens? We cycle through. So it started off like that. Click on it again, it goes like that. And again, it goes like that. And again, back to where we started. So those are your various alignment options within a, a Word 210 cell. Modifying cell margins. If we select all the cells here within the table, then click on the Layout tab here. If we look within the Alignment group, there's this button here that's called, that called Cell Margins. If you click on that, this brings up a, a Table uh, Options dialog box, so you can change the, uh, the top margin, so we'll increase that slightly. We can increase um, the bottom one slightly, and we can increase left and right. Click on OK, and there you are, you've changed the margins. Repeating the table heading row for multi-page tables. Here we've got a large table. As you can see, we've got um, a header here, a description of what the various uh, columns do. And if we scroll down here, it's fine. But if you look on the second page here, as you can see, um, there's, no headers, there's, there's no headers displayed here. We don't know actually what the, um, the data refers to. So all we have to do is select the first row here, click on the Layout tab, then over here within the Data group, we click on where it says Repeat Header Rows, and as you can see, they're automatically displayed here as the, um, the header row within the table. At the moment, we've only got two pages here. If we create some more data, so we just randomly insert some data, Do you see what happened? We've got the header there, the original header. It's repeated here, and if we scroll down this new page we just created, it's also repeated above this line here as a header on the third page, the second page, and also the first page. It makes the data much more uh, readable, much more intelligible. Controlling row breaking across pages. Here we have a large table containing uh, various cells. And if we scroll down, you can see this item here, where it says um, protecting against computer virus infection. The uh, cell here breaks over the page. So in order to uh, prevent this from breaking, if we just click within the table, then click on what it says layout, and within the table group here, just click on properties. This will bring up the table properties dialog box. Click on where it says row, and you see this item here, it says allow row to break across pages. By default that's on, so if we take that off, then click on OK, look what happens. Because we didn't allow it to break over a page, then basically this uh, entire cell is forced onto the next page. Let me uh, undo that. I'll press Control Z to undo it. So I click within this uh, cell here, click on the Layout tab here, Within the table section, I click on properties, make sure the row tab is selected, and then I deselect this, so I don't want to allow the row to break across pages. Click on OK, and there we go. Performing a single column sort. Here we've got a very simple uh, table. This first column is about regional sales, and the second column is about value of sales. If I click within the first column, click on where it says uh, Layout, so we click on the Layout tab. Over here in the Data section, you've got an A to Z sort. If I click on that, basically it's um, talking about regional sales, because that's where I clicked in originally. And by default, if I clicked on OK here, by default it would sort this column in ascending order. Let's try it. There it goes. If I go back and click within that uh, um, column here, 
click on sort again if I want a descending order sort on the regional um, sales column here I click on OK and there we go if on the other hand you wanted to sort the value of sales you click with it somewhere within this uh, cell here within this uh, column you click on sort and again you could say you want it ascending or descending I'll go for ascending click on OK and there are the values in ascending order if I just click within that go to sort descending and click OK you see the value of the sales in descending order multi-level sorting here we have a typical table the first column here is the part codes second column is the country and then we have the number of sales so if we simply click somewhere within the table here then click on the uh, layout tab here then we can click on the sort button within the data group here so we'll click on the sort button this brings up the sort dialog box so we can sort by various items we can sort by part code country or number of uh, number of sales if I click on the down arrow here I'll say right let's sort by country so we're doing a sort by country and then we can do a secondary level sort by number of sales so in this particular case the initial sort the primary sort will sort this into countries and then we'll have number of sales notice the countries are listed in ascending order as are the number of sales we'll click on OK I just click outside this so I can see it more easily as you can see it's sorted by country so we've got Australia then Egypt then Ireland then South Africa UAE then UK in this particular case we've done a sort by country and by sales but maybe it'd be better to see the higher sales first in which case we can just click within the table click on the sort button here we can leave the country um, specified as it was but for the number of sales we'll say oh I'd like a descending order please click on OK and now if we take the example of Australia there you can see which parts are sold the most for this, similarly for the UK we can see we sold five of uh, this particular item here but only two of this particular item here so that's basically how you do a, a multi-level sort within Word 210 converting delimited text to a table delimited text is purely text that's been separated by a standard value so for instance uh, you could have tab delimited or you could have comma delimited and what this means is that each value is separated by a tab space or a comma space in this particular case if I click on the show hide, show hide button up here you can see that there's a tab separating these so this is a tab delimited um, file basically so I click on this that goes away now at the moment this is um, delimited text there's no table so I've just simply selected this by dragging across it I can then click on the insert tab click on where it says table and there's an option here that says convert text to table simply click on that it comes up and tries to figure out how many columns and how many rows you've got it normally gets this right if you've selected the area correctly click on OK notice by the way it says separate at tabs it's picked that up automatically uh, if for some reason you do something else like um, paragraph uh, marks or commas or something else like a dash you could also handle that as well so I click on OK click outside it and as you've seen there's my uh, text converted to a table I'll press Ctrl Z so you can see that one more time the trick is to make sure you select exactly the data don't select sort of extra bits like down here because then it can go wrong so make sure you select exactly whoops exactly the text as required which can be a bit fiddly so basically it starts there and stops there if you select bits before and bits after then you can have problems so here we are I've selected exactly the right part I now go to insert tables convert text to table I make sure that's OK, it looks fine. It's picked up the fact it's tab delimited, which it is. Click on OK, and there we go. Converting a table to text. Here we have a, a standard Word uh, table. If I click within this and click on the layout uh, tab up here, you'll see there's an option here over in the data group that says convert to text. If I click on that, I can convert to text using a range of different delimiters 
by default it probably used tabs and if I click on OK there we go if I click on the show hide here you can see sure enough it has used tab stops to deliminate the data if I press Control Z so I can undo that and if we repeat this I'll click within the the table I'll click on the layout tab here click on where it says convert to text and this time I'll use a comma click on OK and as you can see it now uses commas to eliminate the data. Simple as that.